Welcome into another episode of the Dynasty Dogs. Tonight, we are going to be starting the Dynasty Dog Duel. We are going to be talking about two rookie running backs that are coming onto our 2024 rosters and a little bit of free agency talk, what might happen, what has happened, stuff like that. So we are going to have to do this again because we had a, this is a take two, by the way. Um, Rich is going to explain the Dynasty Dog Duel briefly, real, real quick here, and then we're going to tell talk about what just happened because we have a seven minute recording already of me just struggling so go ahead rich you start off start us so off. take two essentially we're going to be like we said before creating a dynasty roster based off of football cards that we open uh each week we're going to have a different array of cards different types of packs whatever we can find because really it's impossible to find football cards at this time you know we got you got people who do breaks and they have buy up everything. So you got to really be in the store at that time to get them. So whatever mm -hmm. we come across, that's what we're going to be doing. Creating a yeah, dynasty real roster. Qu real quick for two weeks, Rich and I have been trying to find packs of football cards and it has been damn near impossible. Rich, I went to two stores today. Rich got the target and finally found some. Let's see, so it ended target up finally is the, working uh, out. shout out the to target for having some stuff as I move my table over. Yeah, I know. What the hell is happening? <laughs> I'm thinking I'm moving it closer to the Wi-Fi thing. That's what the uh, the light bulb went off in my head. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be building a, a fantasy football roster based off the cards that we open. So um, we're going to be going through, opening them up. Say if I pull a Patrick Mahomes, then I choose Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is off the board. Cannot take him. Michael can't take him. Um, and vice versa. He takes uh, Tony Pollard. I don't know why that's the first name I thought of. But he'll be off the board. So we're going to be writing down our roster, see who we get, and see how it goes. Um, so, yeah, well, you want to get into it, Mike? So real quick before that, we also have to mention the um, the uh, change rule. We get one change, right, mm -hmm. per the whole thing. So say, for instance, I get, you know, I take C.J. Stroud as my quarterback, and then several weeks later I end up pulling a Patrick Mahomes card and I say, you know what? I want to make my change. And that's the only one I have for the rest of the openings. Ch -ch Changes. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, again, we did talk about we're going to figure out how we're going to do it. Um, the cards that we pull, maybe we pull something nice. Maybe we pull a few things that are nice. And during the season, we'll figure out a way to give these away to a few of our listeners, a few of our followers on uh, social medias and everything like that. So uh, that's another thing we're trying to figure out how to do that. But in that case, let us begin. It's time to do, 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 A little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh action real quick. Rich, are Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon? Pokemon, dude. And it's not yeah, even close. It's, I, it's not close. But <laughs> I did enjoy the Yu-Gi-Oh saga for, you know, for what it was. Um, so let's I never got into it. talk about. No, you never got into it? Really? Mm -mm. I was always a Pokemon guy. No, I really guy, enjoyed dude. it. I really like Joey the character. Mm. Yukia. <laughs> uh, I do. I, I'm nope. A little bit of Digimon, actually. Really? Yeah. I, actually, I that would be third on my rankings of the uh, those three. Yeah, that makes sense. By, Not a lot of people it would like be it. tiered. It would be Pokemon would be way up here. Yu-Gi-Oh would be like two, but like far down below Pokemon, and then Digimon would be way down here. But what the kids call this, mid. Yes, mid. Um, so, again, Rich and I had mentioned this is take two. You can see this pack is already kind of open. Oh, by the way, we are opening Rookies and Stars by Panini. This is the brand that we are using for this episode. Uh, very nice pack. Very. Uh, I looked at some of the cards online. It's a very nice artworks and stuff like that. So, again, like I mentioned, this is take two. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know how to open packs of cards. I just spent two minutes trying to open it. So, Rich is like screw this we're starting over again because it was just yeah two minutes of crinkle noises and me getting frustrated and, and my hands <laughs> sweating and fucking mom's spaghetti everywhere or whatever the <laughs> hell's happening so all right i'm gonna be opening this pack first and let us see what we have ah a nice joshua allen is my first card i put it in attack mode Devontae <laughs> Adams. It's getting frisky here. Tyler Ooh. Lockett. Aaron Jones. 
Ooh, who's it? Oh, Kayvon Thibodeau. It's a nice card. If we were doing IDP, that would be the guy right there. Yeah. Oh, man, I'm going to have some trouble. Jamar Chase. Ooh. Aaron Donald. Uh, about 250 in Panini points. <laughs> a. Oh, Kyler Murray. Oh, there that's a go. nice card. Color match. Keenan Allen. It's a nice card. That's a nice card. Actually, this sure is answer. a really nice card here. Um, Rookie Rush. Michael Mayer, your boy. There you go. I like that. Uh, I'm going to be doing an article for a um, for Toilets of Titles on Michael Mayer this week, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, and then cool. the last card is um, Brenton Strange. So I know who I am not taking out of this. <laughs> so... My, I think my the easiest pick in this is I'm going to take my QB1 in full fantasy football, and it's going to be Josh Allen. So Ooh. I'm going to take Josh Allen from this pack. All right. Let's see I if gave I you can, the option uh... to do the rejections, and you said no. No, no, that's okay. That's your boy. I really I do like that Michael Mayer this. card, though. Look at that. I can actually open it. Oh, look at me. I'm good at things. <laughs> And by All the right. way, I know, real quick, I know shit about cards. So, Rich, you're going to have to look at these, and maybe I have something good here. I would like to <laughs> give it... this Michael Mayer card to somebody, though. I feel like this would be a good card for somebody to have. See if it be has nice a, uh, if it's if it's numbered. All right. Uh, gonna, can I get it into mine? Num- yeah, I'm no, sorry. Go ahead. That's not it. That, yeah, I know what you're looking for. All right, so <laughs> Keenan Allen. Oh, another one. Okay. Who we got here? Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry. Ooh, that's a good one. Hoo, 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 hoo. What we got? What we got over here? Jonathan Taylor. Ooh, good one. Nice card. Nice. That's a nice <laughs> looking card too, right? Your boy, George Pickens. Ah, good. I, mean, I know you're not. Oh taking man, this, here we. Ah, uh, this is gonna be a tough pick. Justin Jefferson. Oh, man. Are you going to go with the wide receiver one, or are you going to hope for something else? <sighs> Odell Beckham. Oh, man. Oh, this is this is going to be – this is like the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> so this is going to be a tough one. DK Metcalf. That's your guy, too. You're a big DK Dude, guy, if I remember correctly, yeah. aren't you? I am. I love DK. Dude, this is a nice card here. Oh, man. <laughs> This is like such a stacked pack, dude. <laughs> so this is so this is a pretty sweet card oh, wow. for any of the uh, Pittsburgh that? Steelers fans. It's a Kenny Pickett, an airborne insert. But behind that is a fucking Jalen Hurts. Oh, you're QB one, <laughs> right? Yeah. In Dynasty. I got yeah. Jordan Addison. That's a nice card. And then I got Sidney Brown. Dude, this is like yeah. This is tough, dude. So that's kind of how I felt with uh, Josh Allen and uh, Jamar Chase, to be honest with you, because I think it's still a tough decision. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I want to say... Well, I think I got to go... Jalen. Jalen. All right, so Jalen versus Jaylen. Josh Allen. So funny enough, Rich and I do another podcast, uh, a Philly-based podcast about uh, called the Public Transportation Podcast, talking about Philly sports, wrestling, stuff like that. Rich and I, I think maybe in the between the first and fourth episode, got into a huge fight <laughs> in regards to Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen. And funny let's enough. be honest. Funny how the turntables, because Josh Allen <laughs> had a decent season. Hurts kind of fell off towards the end. And funny how now we both, how now Brown Cow, how both of us have those guys going head to head on our fantasy matchup, our dynasty dog duel. It's time to <laughs> duel. Du- 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 so yes, those are our two picks from those packs, of, that pack of cards. Um, how do you feel about the, how do you feel about the artwork? How do you feel about your pick? They're pretty, this is pretty, this is the first time I'm opening up this specific product. Um, 
it's pretty cool. They got a lot of guys, a lot of cards in there. So obviously you're going to get a lot of base. Um, but yeah, this yeah, is cool. I, Touchdowns I club. I like I that. I'll keep it for the PC. For the but that was a tough a personal, the personal collection. That was yeah, t- that sorry, was tough, I'm not well versed. I'm not well versed <laughs> in lingos of cards and stuff I like that. Rich, that. How long have you been doing this, by the way? Like opening cards and stuff like that? Because this is the first time you've actually put it on to a camera, haven't you? Yeah, this. Uh, I mean, I wanted to get into doing that type of stuff, um, but just for a while, a long time. Um, I don't know how long specific since I was a kid, but um, just more recently just buying up some stuff because it's, it's starting to get hot again, but it's just all the artwork they're, they're coming out with between Donruss and the, uh, the downtown guards and this, this new product that I've never seen before. It's a uh, pretty decent. So yeah, it's a nice, this nice is going to be definitely something fun to do. Um, mm-hmm. How do you feel about your first overall pick Jalen hurts? Well, I took him in our dynasty league that we share together um, with the dynasty DNA guys. So, um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty fine with it. You know what? I think he's going to turn it around. You're pretty fine with it. <laughs> I'm. I'm all right with it. Uh, I mean, you got Justin Jefferson in there, so it's like kind of like, uh, you're going to have some kind of regret, aren't you? You're going to have Justin right. Jefferson play, you know, play his ass off. But I think I'll be all right. I think there's. I think we've got uh, some more cards a brewing. So I got mm-hmm. still early yet. Yeah, I feel pretty good about Josh Allen. Uh, obviously, I posted it on Twitter a few days ago. He has been the. Uh, top or second top fantasy scorer the past four years. So it's kind of hard not to take a guy like that who's been as consistent as Josh Allen. And he's my right. dynasty QB1 going forward. I don't know what the Bills are doing. I don't know if you noticed they made a lot of cuts yeah. the past couple yeah. of days. But I'm mostly on the defense, so I think like they put a lot of money into that defense and they were very upset with the way it's gone. Right. So they kind of were just like, all right, right, we're redoing this. But their offense is still... You know, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Gabe Davis, and my guy, Khalil Shakir, uh, James Cook, Dalton Kincaid, my other guy. So we'll see. We'll see what the Bills have to offer this season. Um, anything else you want to talk about with this before we move on to the no, – Do uh, you want this, to do free agency or do you want to do the rookie breakdowns? Let's wrap uh, – let's do the free agency last and we can uh, kind of get into the, the breakdowns and what we have here. All right, well, why don't you lead us into that, since these were your choices for this Yeah, so this episode, we're going to be breaking down two running backs again. Um, I kind of chose two guys that I was uh, piqued my interest, so to speak, um, in Jonathan Brooks and Blake Corum. Um, Two guys that are, they're they're fun to watch, I'll tell you that, watching their highlights. Um, One sticks out to me, obviously, more than the others, um, and I'll lead with him, and that's uh, Jonathan uh, Jonathan Brooks, I think he, honestly, after watching him, I think uh, like I think he's the the consensus uh, number one running back in my opinion, the guy that I'd like to see on our t- on the Eagles, but um, I don't really expect that, especially with what the um, the latest news is with them. But we'll get into that. Um, so he's kind of a uh, a bigger guy, two two hundred four, um, two hundred four pounds. So he's a big he's a bigger back. So that's kind of something again we're looking for six foot. Um, you were telling me he did tear PFF his ACL. PFF has him at two hundred seven. I don't know if that's from the combine or if that's well, just I mean, what three three Texas pounds. Had. I'm not really worried about. Yeah, true. Good point. Here's some of his stats, uh, PFF stats. So yeah, he did tear his ACL in November of this past year, so four months ago. Uh, that is a concern of mine. Obviously, we know from doing fantasy football a while that. The running backs typically take about two years uh, to kind of bounce back from an ACL injury. Um, So, I mean, Mm -hmm. obviously it's happened in the past where running backs have bounced back in a year, but we're, we're talking about like the upper echelon guys like Adrian Peterson, stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. it remains to be seen. Now you did mention he is um, the, he's on a lot of people's consensus one through three. He's my number four uh, because of the ACL injury. Uh, but tell us a little bit of why you like him again here. He's also PFF's uh, number one running back. And I have his stats up here on the screen from PFF. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I like his speed, dude. He's quick. He's he's quick as hell. Um, his pass catching ability. And, you know, I, I just think that he reminds me a lot of Dalvin Cook. 
um, okay. watching him. Not like just that. not just the hair, but his the way he plays, the way he catches the ball out of the backfield. Um, he does have some ball security issues, but again, we talked about that before. That's something that they, that's easily correctable. Um, something that doesn't scare me that much. Um, he's just he, just watching him. He's just so elusive. It seems like, and you mm. know, his, like I said, his pass catching is unreal. Um, but it is going to take him some time to come back from that injury. But only time will tell. I think he goes right around where you know the running back first round would be, which would be the third round. Um, again, a lot like of people me, are saying he might be a second round pick. You think so? I've seen people say that he could be the first running back off the board. I don't know how I feel about that just because of the ACL injury, but he is extremely talented. But continue, continue. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Um, yeah, I just think he go, he'll he be the first running back off the board, but with, you know, so many good wide receivers out there, I think that kind of pushes um, him to the third de- or to the third round. If there weren't so if they weren't so deep in the wide receiver position, I think um, that would kind of move his stock up. But between that and then all the cornerbacks that are coming out, there's just so many other positions that really take precedence um, in today's NFL that that'll push him to the, the third day, which really isn't. Like I said, like we continue to talk about the third. What's that? It's not a death sentence for running backs at all. No, no. I think the third round is essentially the the first round for running backs, if that makes any sense. Um, No, I understand with that. Yeah. I I actually give that. So what I do is I give that a one round bump. So if they're a third round pick in my brain, the running back is now a second round pick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, You had mentioned that. I kind of remember seeing that. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. if they're a fourth rounder, I give them like a third round pick in my brain. I don't know why I do that, but the running back position is so devalued. That's kind of how I look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, uh, and unfortunately... I like, God, I'm sorry. No, I just, unfortunately it's just like devalued for some weird reason. Mm. I don't like so, it, but so with him, uh, my mini scouting report that I have on him, he has great vision and patience, waits for lanes to open up. Uh, one caught runner and accelerates really well to hit the lo- uh, hit the hole. My thing, so one thing about what I just said there that I really was impressed with him about was when a, a defensive lineman got into the backfield, he made them miss, and mm-hmm. it was almost every single time where you know a defender got in the backfield and he was able to make that you know make the guy miss get get through the hole. Um, Mm -hmm. and get some yardage. So I was really impressed with that. Again, I agree with you. He wasn't asked to do too much in the passing game, Um, 25 receptions, not huge, but he shows soft hands, shows hands catching ability. ability. Uh, Mm -hmm. But the ACL scares me a lot, Um, especially with fantasy football. We got, you know, it's not really like we're trying to wait, to be honest. We're all a little bit impatient. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. And he's he's a little on the leaner side, you know, just a little above 200 pounds. It, it's good, but it's not. I would like to see a little bit bigger. I actually is there so anything official? Because I've seen like earlier, and I, I just I don't looked know it up he, now. I've seen everywhere from two fifteen to two oh four, two oh seven. Does anyone know? Like, so what? I'm going to look it up real quick. If he if he measured at the combine, I don't know if he did or not. So that would be. Um, a question, but I kind of agree with you though. I could see him being the first or second running back off the board. And more than likely Mm -hmm. I can see him being a second round pick on our dynasty rosters, anywhere between the two Oh two to two six. I'm going to probably not take him there. I'm not as high as everybody he was. So I mentioned he's my running back four. he was, Oh, I have him combine has him at two sixteen, So he put on some weight. Even to what PFF has, hmm. so okay, that's a little, that's a little. Uh, I like that. That's impressive. Um, but what I was saying, um, where was I going? I completely just blanked on what I was talking about. But when I saw that two sixteen weight, um, you, you you have him. You're not going to take him at the two oh, six. Yes. So what I was saying was, I had him as my running back five pre combine. Uh, right behind Audric Estime at four, but I have those two in the same tier, so they could have be flip flopped for me at any point. And then when I saw Audric Estime run a four seven two, I was like, "Shit! Like mm-hmm. that's not good." 
right. at all. Uh, I thought he was going to be faster than that. Unfortunately not. But, you know, him and Jonathan Brooks are that four or five for me uh, in the same tier. Uh, he's much more elusive than uh, Audric Estime is. Um, uh, he's, he's a good back, man. And I think if, if you have the patience to wait maybe a year on him, you, you might have a gold mine. Who knows? Right. Um, you want to get into the next guy or do you have anything else you want to talk about? No, go ahead. You can jump in. All right. So your next guy, your next pick here. Uh, let me pull up his screen actually. So hold on. Why don't you start talking while I figure out how to do this? All right. So we're getting into uh Blake Corum. Uh, Blake, dude, there was, a, there were times that he was essentially like thought of as the number one guy. Like it, he mm-hmm. came, he, okay, there, there was is. times last year that um, if he came out last year, that he was going to be the number one. Um, I do like him. I have some concerns, but um, he he should his his like ability to move laterally is insane. Um, he's like a joystick out there, but he's just not the quickest guy. Um, but he's a, like he seems like a, he's like a reliable running back. You know what I mean? He gets a lot of carries. Um, his quick he's quick but not fast. If that makes any sense. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like he, no, like his, I, his I north, definitely agree with that. His north and south isn't like a million miles an hour, but like his east to west is like bounces off like a, a freaking squirrel. Um, so mm-hmm. that's that's something to watch. That's impressive. I like that because it makes guys miss. But then again, it's always been like some guys concern themselves on going east to west. Like we had for Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders could run for a thousand yards east to west. You know, he'd have a thousand yard uh, year, but it was going left and right and not uh, up and down. You know what I mean? So they're like mm-hmm. kind of my concerns. Um, what do you think of him? So uh, let's talk about some of the things because he actually did participate in the combine. So he has a RAS score, a uh, relative athletic score of 8.48. Um, he is listed from the Gotta combine. Got to explain that five... to me. What, what the hell so is that? Explain. So basically it breaks breaks it down by his shuttle drill, his three cone drill, his forty yard dash, twenty yard split, ten yard split, and then his height, weight, bench press, everything like that. It combines it together. And Math Bomb on Twitter, who's a great follow, I hundred percent recommend following him because he does all this work um into showing how athletic these guys are. And it's important for us to know, obviously. So yeah, you're a num- you're a numbers guy with it when it comes to I this not a friggin- numbers guy. You love these uh, these stats and all that stuff. I just look at the uh, meat and potatoes of it. So I, well, yeah, but he had, <laughs> so you mentioned the quickness um, and his shuttle drill and three cone were elite listed as elite, which was his shuttle drill was 4.12 seconds and his three cone was 6.82 seconds, which on the relative athletic scale is elite. But you mentioned the long speed, and that was one of the concerns I have on my mini scouting report of him. He had a four five three, not good, not bad, not great either. It's kind of like a very in between thing, and that's kind of what we saw. He's not the fastest guy. He's quicker than fast. Um, my biggest issue with him, and it bothers me, uh, for a guy who's considered a workout warrior, and he uh, he had twenty seven bench presses, and that tied like a lot of offensive linemen. Yeah, so I think that tied for the did that tie for the most? I think something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the twenty seven really impressive. That. But I mean, you can see it right here on the uh PFF grade. So he is PFF's third ranked running back. But you can see here on PFF his yards after contact two point four, which is extremely poor. You can see that on film. He does go down on first contact a lot. And that yeah, you frustrates don't want that the as... hell out of me. Mm-hmm. It frustrates the hell out of me, and that's why I have him so lowly ranked uh, in my rookie ranks. He is my number eight, I believe, uh, running back of this class. I have concerns about that at the next level where guys are bigger, stronger, uh, you know, trying to take your head off every single week. I don't know. I don't – dude, is when that you teachable? teach the NFL – Is that level, something you can I, – I don't think so. I mean, is it? I don't think so either. I don't think that's something teachable. I think you either are good after contact or you're not. You're not. I mean, there's probably ways you could maybe start falling forward, but he mm-hmm. seems to go down on first contact a lot, especially on film. And that I had that notated. That was my first thing 
I wrote down in my notes on him was mm-hmm. goes down on first contact a lot. Not the not the best tackle breaker. Um and that was frustrating because again, we talk this dude works out like a motherfucker. He should mm-hmm. be he should be stronger with the rock than he is, but unfortunately it just doesn't right. it doesn't translate to the field. Right. So if I mean at least if you're if you've got below average speed then you you're like usually like a bulldozer type back, which means you can get yak. But if he's going down at what did you say two point what seven two point four two two point four yards, yeah, dude. If he, I mean, if you're not quick and you're not getting yards after the you know contact, what it got to work on something. Got to work on something. Yeah, he uh, he also had a lower yards per attempt this year. So he was so 2021, 6.6, 2022, 5.9. 2023, 4.8. I don't really fault. I mean, it, it, it jumps out when I looked at it. It's not something I noticed before, but they do have another, another really good running back uh, in Michigan whose name is escaping me right now. Um, I'll look that up. But I think Blake Corum is going to be a very good football player. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not as high on him as a lot of people are. A lot of people have him as their running back one through three. And, I'm, dude, I'm not there. That, yeah, that I see him in three. Yeah, that the um, the yards after contact, dude, that bothers the shit out of me. The other running back is Donovan Edwards, by the way. Very good run. Okay. But he is, like, I, dude, I don't know. That bothers me. Um, I probably will have no shares of Blake Corum on any of my dynasty rosters. Okay. So we know where you stand with him. So, oh, by the way, I think his dynasty value. So I think he, again, the NFL really likes him from what we're seeing on Twitter, what we're seeing on social media, what you're seeing in interviews and stuff like that. Um, I think he's going to end up getting third, fourth round draft capital in the NFL, which I think will end up being like a mid to late second round pick on our dynasty rosters. Um, Mm -hmm. And again, if he ends up in Los Angeles with Jim Harbaugh, I think my whole fucking process is going to be flipped on its head because, like, you went to the perfect situation. You went to the place that knows you the most. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I just, for some reason, I, I just don't see it. I'm not the biggest fan. Uh, I could be 100% wrong. We're going to be wrong on these things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, by the way, I just mentioned the Chargers with Blake Corum. I meant forgot to mention, and I forgot to say this during my Jonathan Brooks conversation because I started to go off on tangents and stuff like that. Um, when you look at Jonathan Brooks, and maybe it's because he's in Texas, what team do you see him playing for? Because I can tell you right now, he looks like a certain team. Like he looks like he belongs on a certain team. Are you going to say the Cowboys? Yep. Can I ask, are you going to say because of the late Marion Barber? I don't, I don't, dude, I don't know if it's that, but he just like, I don't really don't I know if it's that or too. not. What's that? I got those vibes from him too, but, um, I don't know what it is, but he looks like a Dallas Cowboy running back. And I'm not saying that as a, a bad thing at all, because they've had some really good running backs in their history. So if he goes, and they're going to have I, an open again, spot. So yeah, I think, yeah. Cause I don't know if they're paying Tony Pollard or not, but I, I can, can see him being a Dallas Cowboy. Can't Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> I could yeah. see him. Uh, I could see first thought of maybe Tampa Bay. Um, okay, maybe with the Buccaneers. Your, oh no, you traded Rashad White, so you don't have to. Really yeah, worry dude, about I got that. traded Rashad. Or I traded Rashad White for uh, Rashid Rice, so I'm pretty solid on that. Um, yeah, you're feeling pretty good. I know. Yeah, I could see him. May, yeah, maybe Tampa. Tampa, maybe the Jets. Yeah, maybe, uh, mm. maybe. Who do they I got? They got they did draft that guy with the name that I Anaconda. On Ashwagandha. Brees Hall. You're forgetting the like. Yeah, no, I know, but the... it's it, it, dude. Today's NFL. There's no uh, one guy. There's oh, always sure. a one well, two. They have their backup is one of my favorite running backs from last year's class. Uh, Izzy Abanaconda, a uh, real home run threat. Yeah. But like again, he had some flashes when they were using him, but they didn't really use him much. Um, so maybe they could look for an RB too. I think Jonathan Brooks, like, I think the jets have way too many issues to grab another running back that early. Mm. So I, I think the Cowboys would be a perfect landing spot. Great offensive line. Um, 
So, but that's who where I think Jonathan Brooks goes. But Blake Corum, I mentioned the Chargers. Um, where where do you think he could go? And that's just because of Jim Harbaugh. Like I don't really have any other. Right. Uh, Baltimore. Um, not Pittsburgh. Not. I could see Cleveland him Pittsburgh Steeler for some reason too. Now that you mentioned it, well, they got um, they got Najee Jaylen Harris Warren and, and Najee Jaylen but, Warren. Like but maybe he Cleveland seems like the kind of yeah, Cleveland would be good, but he seems like the kind Cincinnati, of guy Cincinnati dude. Would... Cincinnati, sure, that's a good one. Cincinnati's getting just ready to like get rid of. God, sorry, Joe Mixon. He yeah, looks like a guy right. Mike Tomlin would love, like a real workout warrior, real mm-hmm. like scrappy guy. Like he seems like a Mike Tomlin guy, but they don't really need a running back. But Cincinnati is a good one. I like that. Yeah. Decent pass catching back. Uh, I think yeah, that could work actually. They do. Maybe that's... I think Cincinnati really needs to work on that offensive line before they bring in a guy. Who yeah. Can fight after contact. Oh, uh, look at that! They just announced getting... stuck on Side wrestling bar. again. Yeah, the the U.S. Express and Bull Nakano for the Hall of Fame. Oh, I saw that earlier. Yeah, I don't send it to I you anymore because you get upset when I ruin your surprise. Yeah, see, look at me. This is what happens. I'm surprised now. I'm like, who the hell is the U.S. Express? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you wouldn't have even friggin' known, dude. Listen, but, I'm gonna uh, be there for I'm gonna be there for Paul Heyman, and that's gonna be great. Um, but yes, so those are our two breakdowns. Uh, these two guys, again, I think both of them could be mid-second round picks in our dynasty roster or dynasty drafts, um, you know, draft capital, depending if for some reason one of these guys really just dips and we de- we don't see coming. Uh, mm-hmm. But I can see them both being second round picks. And um, I prefer Jonathan Brooks much more than Blake Corum. But I think Jonathan Brooks has become my number one uh, running back. I could see. I. I mean, that's fair, dude. I just. I really like Bucky Irving had a terrible combine. Trey Benson had a great combine, and Marshawn Lloyd had a great combine. So those are my top three. And uh, I just. I just. God. Call me a weirdo, but like I don't put that much stock into the combine. I really don't. No, you don't. Like, I just. So you know what I mean? Like it's just like so many people base everything off of dudes running around in their boxers. So it's like really like. It's, I watch game film, you know what I mean? Like the, when they're playing against people, that's what I take. You know what I mean? If you can, what's the matter how fast you run a 40, you know what I mean? You're not, none of those, all those numbers are skewed anyway. Cause again, you're running in your boxers. So it's like, so I, I agree and disagree. So I agree that the com a lot of the combine, um, doesn't matter, but I do take some stock stock into like the RAS score. Like we talked about. Your like how athletic you are. How how is your quickness drills? How are your um, how's your gauntlet if you're a wide receiver? Uh, stuff like that. How's your pass catching for a running back and those drills? Yeah, I mean you can say that you're in your boxes and everything, but you still have to be able to compete against your peers. Like when Audrey Gastamay runs a four seven two, I'm like shit. Like that's not good. Like he looks faster than that on film, but four seven two is not good. Right, but again, it's like you're not in pads. It, like what? Like the pass catching? Are you you're running out of the backfield in a cutoff against no against no? Right, but so if you're on the dropping it, on the, if you're dropping it, if you're maybe dropping you're just not, it like he's that, just not used to it. They're just not used to it. I think the combine the same. Good. I think the combine should have some, not a lot, but some. Um, What's the word? Pads? No. Well, yes, but should some should have some weight in your rankings in your thought process process behind these players. Not a lot. I do take some of it. I just think like if so, it could skew it the other way where guys, wow, this guy didn't drop anything. This guy's look how amazing he looks again because he's in shorts and his you know he's he's got no restriction he's catching everything yeah because he can get his arms up he can get you know what i mean so it's like i don't put too much stock into it i like to see what i like to see on the field um i don't know that's just i that's how i always thought i always thought the combine now is more like novelty a, t- a talent show yeah it's like wow he can catch it look at all his ca- look how far he can throw the ball you know how throwing a so, ball with with pads on and without pads on, how limited your arm mobility is. 
listen, I That's get just it. The way I in, look at it. In general, I take some things into it. Like I really was high on Troy Franklin. I know we're getting a little off topic, but when he ran that gauntlet drill, so the gauntlet drill, obviously you've got the ball coming at you from both sides, um, you know, different ways. You have to try to stay as straight as possible on that third. I think it's a 30 yard line or whatever it is, but dude, he was fucking all over the place on his gauntlet drill. He was like over here, over there, over here, over there means it makes it seem like he doesn't trust his hands. Like he needs to be over here when the ball's coming this way. He needs to be over here when the ball's coming this way. You know what I mean? Like he can't, you know, do you see what I'm saying? Like he's got to yeah, focus his hands over here. So I, that, I take some of that for granted. I take some of that into consideration, like the shuttle drills for a running back, uh, your, your, your splits. I take that into consideration. I think so, it does, it does, should have some weight in my opinion. But everybody some, has a difference of opinion. Yeah. Some people love looking at stats. Some people love watching films. Some people uh, love the combine. Some people don't. Everybody has their their thought processes. Like when I do my running back ranks, I take everything into consideration. Stats, film, stuff like that. Like I said, we talked about uh, last week with Ray Davis. If Ray Davis was just based on film, he would have been my number one or two running back. But because he's 24 years old, again, he was a dude that smashed combine. That that completely made sense to me watching his film. But again, he's 24 years old, going to be 25 during the season. So I take some of that mm-hmm. into consideration. I just take everything all encompassing when doing my rankings and stuff like that. I think, what's his name? It's going to be, Blake Corum's also going to be 25 or 24. He's going to be 24. Yeah, he's an older prospect. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Jonathan Brooks I th- is younger because he's a junior. I think he's 22, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Do um, you want to talk a little bit of free agency before we get out of here? Sure thing. Who do you want to get into? Uh, let's talk about Russell Wilson. He was a, uh, a essentially, I guess, a cap casualty for the Denver Broncos. Cause, is, wait, wait I mean, is he? He's like the reverse of a cap casualty. Like, he's just like, he's just like. Well, they, took, be, like, they took it be, and they saved money. I have no idea what did, happened. Did, did he like, dude, he's going to be like 85 million a dead cap. Yeah, I 80? know. And what was what was uh, what was Carson? Like a sixty or like, something like that. It like wasn't something that near. like wow, this makes me feel. I'm like wow, that's great, dude. Yeah. We, that's wow. great. Eight, wow, eighty five million dollars to get him out, and he's such yep. a stooge. Like he like, I just like, I just can't get over how corny he is. He's like, let. Broncos Nation, let's rock! Like you're so corny, dude. And I can't wait to see where he lands. Like, because if he like does go to the Steelers, for instance, dude, you know he's gonna be like oh, Pittsburgh with the towel. Like, let's let's whatever I know, Pittsburgh I says. Was, dude, I was, uh, insert dude, whatever I was, Pittsburgh says here. Yeah, Steelers you know? Nation, let's ride. Yeah, um, and then like, with a towel. Like, come on, dude, you're such towel. a like cornball. <laughs> so he interviewed with the Steelers, and I believe on his way back, he interviewed with the Giants. So it's a weird route. Where there's the hell is he going? Uh, dude, I have no idea. And I'm confused as to what the giants are doing because like there's rumors are completely done with Daniel Jones. Like they're going to maybe Russell Wilson's on their mind. Maybe um, they're drafting one because they have a top pick. I think they're the fifth, fifth pick, something like that. But Who? again, the giants? Russ, yeah, the giants. Mm. Uh, so it surprises me a little bit they interviewed Russell Wilson because they are not a team that's like a competing team to me at all. They just seem like they have no idea. Like they're one of those teams that are just like a terribly ran organization as of recent. The Steelers. Because they, the Steelers would make no, not sense. No, the Steelers, though. the Giants. The Giants oh, I'm talking okay, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like the Giants the Steelers right now. Sense. Yeah, I mean, if that – I guess, you know what, that would make the most sense, I guess, because that could maybe teach little hands how to be a football player. Um, because Russ ain't going to be there forever, but if you nah. have him there for what three, a year. two or three years, you think one year? You think he signs a one I year think deal? He gets a one year deal. Yeah. Okay. Like a prove it deal um, at this point. Yeah. Like you just you just were an eighty four million dollar cap hit. Like nobody's signing you for big money at this right. point or years. Um, right. I think I don't know if I've seen any other options for him. Um. Atlanta, I guess, would be an option. I don't know if he's interviewing there or anything. Minnesota, maybe, because 
We're going to talk about Kirk Cousins here in a second. Um, I, but yeah, I, I actually, I'm kind of interested. I put on, I put on Twitter when he got released that I think a dark horse could be back in Seattle. Um, yeah, I did. I think, yeah, I did. I do think I saw you say that. I think that'd be, I think that'd be cool. Um, I mean, what do they have in Seattle? They have Geno Smith and they have, you know, Drew Locke. Mr. Yeah, I, I, I like him for some reason. I don't know what it yeah. is. I think it's just that like video it. of him rapping uh, Put On by Kanye mm-hmm. and Jeezy. I, like, yeah. I think that's I, what it is. Yeah, he's he's cool. He plays with like, a, I don't give a shit. You know, he knows who the hell he is. But um, I mean, he it'd be cool fucking, to see him. He did put the nail on the coffin on the Eagles. Well, that's because Jalen's like, oh, we need 10 yards here. Go Here's, here's a fucking bomb <laughs> down the fucking road here. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're thinking, but I think it'd be cool to see him go back to Seattle. Um, maybe turn Seattle into a playoff team, take him a little further in the playoffs. Um, that'd be cool. That'd be a nice story. I like when I like when things turn out that way. But uh, Pittsburgh like see- does make sense too. Yeah, I would like to. I would like it for uh, JSN. To be honest with you, uh, he needs yeah. a quarterback. Badly. Yeah. Uh, the next guy we'll talk about is T. Higgins. He did get the franchise tag from the Cincinnati Bengals. I know a lot of people were kind of hoping uh, for our dynasty rosters he would be moving on. I kind of was mm-hmm. hoping that. But, again, it makes the most sense for the Bengals. I don't think I've seen that he's not overly thrilled, so maybe that was like a sign-and-trade type of thing or a tag-and-trade in this mm-hmm. case. So maybe that happens. But I, I know he, I know people were kind of hoping he was going to move out of the chase situation. So, so when fan, so ever since the fan, franchise tag has like come in to the league, I don't remember when it has, but it hasn't been all our long, adult yeah. football lives. Um, I kind of don't get pumped for like when it goes throughout the season. They're like, you know, the big name guy. Oh, well, he's going to be a free agent. I don't ever think I'm like, wow, why is he going to be playing? Just because I'm like, I know they're going to like, bang, he's getting tagged. Like, that's just like, he's not going anywhere. It's like, oh, whatever. And that's what happened with him. Like, I kind of did get a little bit, I was like, but in my mind, I'm like, he's getting tagged, dude. They're not, they're not letting him go. Because, I mean, that's just like kind of kicks the can down the road and lets them figure out, you know, hey, do we want to sign this guy? Do we not want to sign him? Guy? And I don't know why they wouldn't, aside from not having the money, because I think it's T Higgins. That. Yeah. T Higgins and, uh, Jamar Chase is a nice one too, man. That's a that'd be a nice one, one of the two. top four, three duos in the league. Top three, probably. Now, do you think that's better than AJ and Devonta? No, no. Okay, neither no. do I. So I think um, it's Chase over AJ, but it's not far. And I think it's Devonte over T Higgins. Yep. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm not against that. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, I was kind of hoping he would move on because I do have like a share or two of him on our dynasty rosters. Um, but, again, it's really not the worst thing in the world to have Joe Burrow as your quarterback if he's healthy. So you take it, you take what you can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, the next I, I, guy we'll talk about. God, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, you know how I feel about Joe Burrow. He's starting to uh, slip for me. He's, 27. Uh, yeah. 27. He's fucking 27. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, so another guy who got the tag wide receiver, Michael Pittman. I think we all saw that one coming. Uh, I actually thought they were going to get a deal done with him and maybe they still can. I don't think he, go. I, I definitely don't think Michael Pittman's going anywhere and I never thought he was going to, uh, uh-uh. they needed him there in Indianapolis. I think to be honest, I think Michael Pittman is one of the most underrated wide receivers in in football and one of the most underrated dynasty f- wide receivers in di- in dynasty and fantasy football. I can agree with that dude. I, I mean, cause it, even myself, like I'll, I just straight overlook them when I'm drafting. I'm like, nah, nah. I, and, but, and we, why, well, I don't know, I don't why, know why we do it. Like, yeah, I mean, he's There's good. He's just I like, actually really like Michael Pittman. If you just need him, I need a guy to throw him at throwing the ball. Wow. We'll see what Anthony Richardson can bring this year healthy. Right. I really love Anthony Richardson, and that's a guy I'll put it up to him because Michael Pittman is a, a monster with those 50-50 balls, like a Mike Evans type. Yeah. But uh, Mike Evans, we I didn't even have him notated, but he's staying in Tampa, which, again, makes sense. That kind of surprised me. Really? I thought for, I thought for sure he was gone. Yeah. I kind of see – so in my brain, I think Tampa wants to try to make another run, so that's why they're bringing – 
Evans back. Mm-hmm. That's why I think they're going to bring Baker back uh, eventually. And I think Mike Evans just seems like the kind of dude that wants to stay in Tampa. Like he wants yeah. to finish his career in Tampa. Loyal to a fault. Yeah. Uh, he has a Super yeah. Bowl ring with him. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about the Tom Brady Super Bowl. How could I forget? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So then, and, yeah, whatever. He won. So. Yeah. So my thing is, I actually, before we get on to the next one, I've seen people on Twitter arguing back and forth, and you know my answer for this. Is he a Hall of Famer? I mean, I don't think it's that. It's it's a no it's a no brainer. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's a yeah. Hall of Famer. No, no doubt. No, like, I agree. He's. I think he is. He. You know how Mike? You just said Michael Pittman is Michael, kind of overlooked. Yep, he's Michael Pittman. I think mm-hmm. for the Hall. Yeah, for the Hall of Fame. I'm like, hey, do you like know his numbers? Do you like he's. He's been one of our best wide receivers we've ever seen. See, the and argument people overlooked. make, the p- argument people are making against him, which I find asinine, is he's never been one of the top five guys. He's never been in that range with Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase. He's never been that main guy. But when you look at his stats, dude, he's fucking like a thousand yards every single year in his of his career. From his right. rookie year till now, the dude I, I bet against him this year. We talked about it. He was my dog, uh, dog house for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Completely fucking wrong. Mike Evans is a stud. Mike Evans is a Hall of Famer. I, yep. I I'm shocked people disagree with that. But again, he is what Michael Pittman is now. Super underrated, like you said. Yeah. Uh, yep. Next guy we'll get into. Next guy we'll get into is uh. Kirk Cousins seems like it's not going to happen in Minnesota because I think that I think they're far apart on money, from my mm-hmm. understanding. Um, Kirk is the likely landing spot for Atlanta, which would be amazing with the weapons they have there. You know, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, uh, Bijan Robinson. I think that'd be a great fit and a kind of like the, a great, uh, you know, year or two quarterback for them. I think he's kind of uh he's kind of putting it out there more than more than Atlanta's putting it out there, don't you think? And like it's like it seems mean? like he's it seems like one of those things he's like, Yeah, I'd really like to, his wife's from Atlanta and I, you know, yeah, I'd really oh, like to play in Atlanta, okay, so but he's it's like dropping the hints. Yeah, but it's like, dude, do they want you to play in Atlanta? Like, yeah. It's like uh, I don't be, know. I, dude. I would be interested in that. Say for instance, if Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta and you're a contending roster, would you go out and try to get Kirk Cousins? Yeah, uh, yeah, because I would try to go out and get Kirk Cousins regardless because he's just, he's always been like an average, like you can count on him for like 20 to 22 points. So it's like, mm-hmm. he, he's never been really the guy to put you down. But um, I think he kind of skyrockets Kyle Pitts and everyone else on that roster, really. I mean, anyone does compared to uh John Ritter they got over there or <laughs> does John Ritter does that guy stinks dude. um so say for instance you wanted Kirk Cousins and you have you are the reigning champion of your league you have the 112 right and you think Kirk Cousins can give you another championship this year are you giving up the 112 you think that's a little rich rich is your name um <laughs> Or would you rather give up like the two hundred one, maybe two hundred two? Like, where would where do you draw the line? Because I think, to be honest, I would, I'd be on the fence. But I feel like if I thought my roster was good enough to win again, I think I'd give up the one twelve. Uh, yeah, but who? So who? Who do you think falls at one twelve? Like, who's looking at one twelve? So I just did some mocks with toilets and titles these pa- uh, the past two weeks. Uh, let me look at it real quick. So the 112 was uh, Bo Nix and Keon Coleman. And to be honest with you, I think I'm taking Kirk Cousins over both of them if I'm trying to win right now. Yeah, if you're trying to win for right now. But like, you'd be smart to get Bo Nix if you're trying to like, okay, you could still maybe win, make a trade, and then also replenish the farm system, so to speak. Where you're not completely running yourself dry. I also don't think Bo Nix is like a. I don't think he's necessarily the answer for any franchise. 
Yeah. So it's it's all a gamble. I mean, and again, we're super early. The draft isn't for another month and a half. Um, right. These mock drafts are going to completely flip on their head between now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I would rather take a shot with Kirk Cousins for one more year to win a title than any of those two options. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, I don't think you're wrong either way. Um, mm. Like, gearing up for the future with a roster you still can win at or definitely win with Kirk. 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 Yeah, I keep. I've always said Kurt too, and it yeah. always. Catches, Could you say it so fast? Yeah, it's such a bad name. <laughs> it's a bad name. Uh, is there anybody else you want to talk about that maybe I missed? Dude, Saquon. The oh, maybe shit. arguably yeah. like, I think say, dude, this is. I'm so intrigued, dude, and I keep reading them. Like the Eagles have mutual interest, and in, you know, while well, they have mutual interest, and in, Saquon wants to play in Philadelphia, and I'm, I was listening more and more on the radio today, and they're like, Saquon, like, really would like to play here. And it kind of makes sense. Think any of to that stick has it to... to do with revenge? Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Say. I was going to say he's going to stick it to New York. Why not? Mm-hmm. I mean, absolutely. The same reason why Demarco Murray played here. I mean, but that was a disaster. By that fucking, all Chip. that, that was, was all disaster. Chip Kelly, dude. That was all Chip I know. Kelly. Because if it yeah, wasn't Chip Kelly love, here, we know people that love Chip Kelly, and I don't understand why. But... Yeah, I, yeah, I can't. I could never really stand Chip Kelly. I, he blew up the franchise created fake stories but i don't know that's i guess awesome to some but um dude yeah i think if he plays here and a lot of it you got to take into account well people are like well his injury history is it he played literally in the biggest fucking dump in the entire nfl like that's known for people just like destroying their legs and you know that has to be taken into account and i know that his first five years are played there but it's going to be different when you're playing you know what eight home games not there Mm-hmm. you know sure. so and i think he's got a lot left in the tank um i'd love to see him land here i got a lot left in the tank mark henry <laughs> yeah. um so i know you're a big uh taylor swift i mean deandre swift fan <laughs> i got i gotta ask you like deandre swift or saquon barkley is a philadelphia eagle what are you taking uh because you're going to have to pay one more than the other, and I think we know who's getting more money. Yeah, I'm taking Saquon. Yeah, I think so, too. I think he puts you way over the edge. Yeah. In the, in, I, in the running game, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think I would take Saquon, too. What do you think that means to his dynasty value if he becomes a Philadelphia Eagle? Um, I think it kind of increases it. I mean, if I he, think it if increases you guys, it well. But I'm like cautiously increasing it because we saw what happened with DeAndre Swift, but he's at levels above DeAndre as a running back. Yeah, but I mean, if he can have such a great, you know, dynasty and fantasy impact on the Giants who stink, imagine sure. him on a good team. Like imagine no, him here on a good team, you know? I 100% agree. Yeah, I would love to see him here. Um, I think if he becomes a Philadelphia Eagle, I think it's going to be almost impossible to try to buy Saquon, to be mm-hmm. honest with you. Because I think people are going to have that excitement. Unless it's a rebuild, a team that needs a rebuild, they'll probably move him. But then again, his price goes up. So I mm-hmm. think if you're going to buy Saquon Barkley, do it now before yeah. he makes a decision. Uh, because it, he could end up back in New York. You could kind of try to use that as leverage. Like you don't know where he's going. Uh, for all the fuck we know, he could retire. I mean, that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> but like I would try, if you're going to try to go out and get Saquon, I would do it right now. Agreed. Or again, he, if he doesn't come here, if he goes to Houston, like he's automatically the number one there by fucking yeah. miles. I think I see. Like, that's I think another I good see spot. Derrick Henry in their future. I I think he's a Baltimore Raven, and I think Saquon's between us and Houston. I'll see. Monday's going to be exciting. Crazy. Is that when it opens? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Well, legal tampering opens Monday. Yeah, legal tampering. Like, we all haven't, but they haven't been doing it. Right. Uh, All right, well, that will wrap it up. You know, we did our first uh, Dynasty Dog duel. Uh, I think that went extremely well, except for the first take that we did. You know, it's going to be Jalen Hurts versus Josh Allen for the season. Uh, We did our two breakdowns, which I think both of these guys have a future in the NFL and on our Dynasty rosters. And we talked some free agency. So we got in a lot in 55 minutes. So... 
Uh, for Rich and myself, we are going to be signing out as the Dynasty Dogs. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for the follows, retweets, everything. Again, you can find me at Dynasty Dog mm-hmm. Mike on X, and you can find Rich at Dynasty Dog Rick 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 <laughs> at Dynasty Dog Rich on X. Have a good night, sure. everyone. <laughs> Peace.